Hi, this is James at C2. Welcome back to our latest tutorial. In today's tutorial, we're going to be covering business process flows. Now, a business process flow is a set of steps which can be added to forms which will guide the user through a completion of forms. They're particularly useful for onboarding new starts. They're also useful for defining processes that users must stick to. That will probably make more sense when you see one, so let's see one in action. So I'll navigate to the CRM, and I'm going to run business process flow against this lead record for Owen McLeod. The business process flow is the area at the top of the screen. Here it's in blue. So what it does is it guides the user through our sales process. So the first thing to do is, in our case, do we want to check that this relates to an existing contact? Well, of course we do, so I'll click in there. I hit the search button and it finds that there is a contact of that name. So we know it's the same person, so we can add that. If not, you may have noticed that there is also the option for new. Okay, is there an existing account relating to this lead? Now we can see at the bottom of the screen, yes there are, because we've recorded that Owen McLeod works for this organisation here. So if I click there, CRM will navigate to that, find it, there we go. We can relate it to other records if we wish, but we know that one's right, so we'll continue there. Purchase time frame. I'm going to enter that as this quarter. We expect the sale to be made then. And I'm going to put in just a generic £1,000 for the budget. Now, in our sales process, we need to know is the decision made by an individual or a committee? Well, in this case, I'm going to choose individual. Have I identified the decision maker? Yes, I have. And the capture summary. I'm just going to say, called Mr. McLeod, interest confirmed. Okay, now, notice where this flag is. The flag notifies the user of which stage in the process we are at. So I'm going to quickly save my record. There it is. It's just happened automatically anyway. And this is the end of the process as far as the lead is concerned. But we'll notice there are other steps which are locked. Now, the reason the other steps are locked is they run on an opportunity record. So what we have to do is change our lead to an opportunity we do that by qualifying the lead. Okay, and you notice that a tick appears beside qualify because we finished that bit and the flag moves on to the develop active stage where we can enter some more information. Now I'm just going to quickly stick some data in here simply to speed up the process to show you how this works. Have I identified the stakeholders? Yes. Have I identified our competitors? Yes. And then I can click on to the next stage. Now notice these ones are not locked out now because they relate to the opportunity entity as well. So click next stage. Have I identified the sales team? Yes. Have I developed the proposal? Yes. Have I completed the internal review? Yes. Have I presented the proposal? Yes. Skip on to the next stage. And here we go. Have we completed our final proposal? Yes. Have we presented the final proposal to the customer? Yes, I have. Have I confirmed the decision date? Yes. I can enter it here. I'm going to say they will let us know by the 1st of April. And I'm going to save it there. Now, the reason I'm saving it here is just to show you if we then leave the record. So I shall go to my sales and activities area. And then I'm going to go into the opportunities and we will find our opportunity for Owen in here. And the next user who enters the record sees that at this point we have completed our final proposal. We have presented our final proposal. We have a decision date and all they have to do is send a thank you. Have they filed the debrief? Yes. We can save that. And you will notice that, that is the end of the opportunity. So now we have completed the sale. We close that as one. I'll put the revenue in there. It was a thousand pounds. Hit OK. And now we have closed the opportunity for Owen McLeod. And we now have a sale made. So we can see that the business process flow guides the user through the process that they have to follow. Business process flows are fully customizable. And I'm going to show you how to customize your business process flow. Okay, so how do we edit a business process? Well, that's easy to do. If you're logged in with sufficient security rights, if you go to the top, in the more commands area, there's an edit process button. Now, the same facility is available via the settings and then processes tile, or you could go settings, then to customization and then processes. But since we're on the lead form, 
at the moment it's easiest to just do it from the form itself. Okay, this loads up our business process flow. Now what I would like to do is I want to add an extra branch. Now branches are a new facility that's available in 2015. They haven't been available previously in Dynamics. But what I want to do is where the estimated budget amount, I want to add a little branch in to remind the user that if the amount is over a certain value, I want them to change the rating on the lead. So all we do is we go to the area that we wish to do and we add a branch. Now before we do that, just to quickly cover it, if you want to change any of the things in here, they're easily changed by clicking. So we can change the name of the step, we can change the field that it looks up to under value. We don't want to do that in this case, so I want to add a branch. And what we're doing here is we're adding a little condition into it. So what I said was I want where the budget amount is greater than or equal to a value of let's say ten thousand pounds so that's as included our branch i want the business process flow to move on and include an extra stage now the stage name i'm going to give it is very simple budget over ten thousand pounds it's on the entity don't want to add any relationships or a category so i'm going to call that update the rating. So that's the name of the step and what I want to do is assign which field the, the user must update and that will be the rating. So we'll scroll down to rating, find that and I want this to be business recommended. Well I don't but if I did I would include in there a little tick underneath required and that makes that step mandatory. Now I'll just quickly fix my spelling. And I also want to change the order that these two steps appear in. So what I need to do is click in that area and notice at the bottom some, some arrows appear. I want to move existing account up. I want that to be the first thing that the user has to do. So we'll move the order there. I'll save my new process. And I have to remember to ensure that it's active. Now there are a few restrictions on the number of stages and things that you can do. You can have up to 30 stages in your process. So you can have very, very sophisticated processes set up. Now, as I said, up to 30 stages and each stage can have up to 30 steps and therefore fields included in it. So you are limited to a total of 900 fields being used. That would have to be a very, very sophisticated business process flow. But I'll show you that in, in action. So I've just ensure I've saved it again. And now close the screen down. I'll refresh the screen. And what we should see in this business process flow is that account now appears above contact. So I'm going to select the account in there it reads the information at the bottom and pre-populates it that's fine now one thing i didn't cover at the time is if i change the account here if i look up the more records and i change the account on this lead to adventure works when it's saved and now when we look at the business process flow, we see that account now appears before contact. Now we're going to quickly fill these in to show you the branching working. It's an existing contact. No, it's not. So let's add a new one for Hakim Beasley. Hakim Beasley, see the fields are pre-populated. We'll save that. Purchase time frame. Doesn't matter what we put in. An estimated budget. Now I'm going to put in £20,000. And notice when I did that, the next stage appears in the process flow. So when I come to the next stage, when I qualify the lead, there is then fields to update. So we want to change this from warm to hot. You'll also notice if I put it back to 5,000, for example, or 5 even, that disappears. So it does work dynamically. And that is business process flows. Now, as we discussed, there's a limit of 30 stages and within each stage, there are a limit of 30 fields and steps that can be included. But as you've seen, something of that size would have to be a very, very sophisticated business process flow. In terms of updates, since 2013, the addition of the IF branches makes business process flows even more powerful than they ever were. And that concludes our tutorial on business process flows. If you've got any questions, as ever, 
please subscribe to C2's YouTube channel, give us a thumbs up or sign up for one of our CRM free trials. Thanks for listening.